what am I going to do if I have those kids? I was like, well, what have I done before? I've always gotten through them, so if I have them, then I'll just have to work through it. <laughs> Hi everyone! Happy Friday! Happy Friday! Hello, our men and beyond high achievers all over the world. We are here once again. This is Coach Shangri-La and Vineta. We have Pam in, the, in right here as one of our special guests. She's she's calling in from Georgia. Today is very very valuable because let me just pull it up of what we're gonna be talking about. All right, so here you go how to break out of swim plateau what to do to shave off 24 seconds off your swim pace in just 30 days while swimming one hour or less and only three times a week yes awesome that doesn't sound like work that doesn't sound like training there's not much training there that's like about less than three hours who wants to want who wants to have that so let's Let's talk about like what we're going to be discussing today. All right. So why swimming more days or hours may not help you get faster. We're going to talk about that. Why? Uh, What to do to get faster in swimming within 30 days, even without seeing a swim coach in person. How to get out of plateau. For example, if you're the type of person or swimmer who's been like swimming at three minutes per 100 yards, two minutes per 100 yards, but not improving for so many years or for so many months, like that is, you're in plateau, pretty stuck. How, how, what can we do about that? What to do at the mass swim start with feet in your face when you cannot breathe properly, you're getting winded, feeling anxious. What are you going to do? So Anyone here who is about to race this weekend, this is perfect for you. Or in a few weeks, or maybe next month, this is perfect for you. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about the swim start. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. How about this one? How how about those go getters there who wants to aim for top age group, but then you don't really want to say it because it starts pressuring you, you know? <laughs> or or for example, you know, like you really want it, but then once you start. Once you start thinking about it, like, uh, can I actually do it? But then how can we actually reframe your mindset so you can still enjoy your experience? And actually, you can actually test whether you can actually do it. So how can you do that? So basically, we're going to be talking a lot about different things from getting faster without spending so much time. Yes, getting faster like, and you're swimming without spending so much time yeah and, what what if they thought that hey i have to go to the pool every day to get faster like, yeah. that's that takes a lot of time or a um, lot of driving like or like if you're new to triathlon and you know hey you want to you still need to train for a bike or to run or maybe you have some extra curricular activities like trail run or some more cycling adventure some mountain biking and then of course you got family right Kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You you work also, right? <laughs> and, or like the learning curve of learning triathlon. There's so many things, but then there is this swimming that is just the bugging you. Like, how can you even go faster? How can you do that? How about if you don't really go to the open water? Okay. So today is gonna we're gonna tackle a lot about different things. Okay. And but before that, before we actually uh, jump into our training today, let's welcome those individuals that's actually in here. If yes. you're here, let me just let me just say hi to everybody. Hi, Elisa. Glad you you could join us. Hi, Yesenia. Pete's here. All right. Selena's hello, here. hello. Awesome. Gwen, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Awesome. Everyone's already jumping in. Hello, everyone. So if you're here. Okay, put hashtag live down below so we know that you're actually listening live. Or if you're listening to this one uh, on a replay, put hashtag replay. Okay, so are you excited to actually learn more about this? Are you one of those? Like right now, you know, what's going on with your training or with your triathlon or like what's happening? And because the reason being is because uh, we don't, we want this one more of an engagement, you know, like we want the group, you 
who is listening and watching this one, whether that's live or replay, you know, we wanted you to be able to ask questions. Okay, so we make sure that we're able to help you right now. So let us know how is it going with your training? What are your goals this year? Okay, I'm seeing Kimberly's saying live, Pete saying live, Thomas is here. Alicia. Hello. Awesome. Okay. Good. P put in a, uh, what were you asking them? Sorry. Hashtag replay or like what's what's happening with your training? Yes, let's see what's happening with your swimming. Where yeah. are you at? Yeah. Um, and then also if you, I know we already posted earlier, you know, the, what we're going to be talking about. If there's anything at all that like, for example, I think Kim, hi Kim, I'm glad you're here. Um, you know, like I'm going to touch base. So like, how can you apply that in, uh, I think you have endless pool. So we're going to talk about that also. All right. So, uh, and then also for those who are new in this group, we do this one on a weekly basis and it's free. You can join anytime you can get the replay. If you cannot attend the live training, or if you think that you have friends who can actually benefit from it, then go ahead and tag them right now. Okay. Um, so if you're new here, say I'm new. Welcome. Welcome to the group. We have a lot of free training resources from nutrition, running, swimming, biking, planning, structuring your workouts, or if you're dealing with some injury or surgery, like how can you get back to just triathlon or you're dealing with some um, hardships, you know, like how can you reframe your mindset? All right. So before we get started, let me share you how we met Pam. Pam is in the background. Let me introduce Pam here. Hello, Pam from Georgia. How are you doing, Pam? It's Friday. Happy Friday. I'm doing great. Happy Friday, everybody. All right. <laughs> it's <fun to> be <laughs> here. Yeah. So three hours ahead of time. Really happy that you're able to jump in here. I'm glad it's not so busy at your work. So welcome. And uh, everyone, just to let you know, so Pam, I just realized how long we've known Pam. We've known Pam less than six weeks. We can you believe that? I was counting like, when did we first talk to Pam? Yeah, it's like less than six weeks only. This is the fifth week, this fifth week. Um, and basically, you know, like she was actually just like you all who's watching this live training. She was inspired by these ladies here. And that was back end of uh, June. And if you are that type who's also wanting to correct your swim technique, this is available as well. This is well, one of our live trainings that we did before when, when Pam saw it for the first time. And then she was like, oh, that's cool. So uh, basically, we're talking about here correcting swim technique. How do you know if you're doing the right swim technique with that and how to correct it without a swim coach in person? And these ladies... Uh, are Judith, in the east Kelly. coast actually and it's really really you know great seeing them progress um how to, how to go up ham when we when you were watching this one like how did you what did you find out on this one on this training or what inspired you yeah well one of the things that really stood out to me were a i know judas wanted to be injury free and that was pretty awesome. Um, they all talked about how focused the training was, like the drills and everything. And even if they couldn't get there, you know, or had to cut the workout short, you know, what was the thing that really moved the needle for them? You know, and the training was just really focused around that. Yeah, sure. um, and the improvements that they made with that. I'm like, yes, this is this is exactly the kind of training that I want. There you um, go. Sign me up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, what was what was going on in your life when you when you saw this? What, where were you with your swimming? Like, how was it then? Well, yeah. So, yeah. So swimming, I had just gotten back to it. You know, COVID, the pool, pools had closed. I had never been a fast swimmer. And anyone who knows me uh, knows that I've, I've always tried to get faster. But it's like I was the same pace, whether I haven't been swimming in a year. If I went to the pool three, three or four times a week, it's like I never got faster it was like this puzzle <laughs> that I yeah. couldn't solve. so uh, earlier like this year like in January it's like you know I'm just gonna start swimming um just to get back into it but I really didn't have a plan I really wasn't doing anything but just okay. swimming with all my pool toys you know the paddles the fins the pool buoy I had all that from previous lessons and things like that um but it's like I saw the saw the the live training and I'm like wow I really want to like do something and get the and get better All so right. so this is uh kelly jan from florida judith judith here 
uh, yeah, I'm really happy that you were able to actually watch that just right on time because mm -hmm. that was less than six weeks ago. And suddenly <laughs> within just 30 days, you got what they got. Is that true? Yeah. So let me ask you. So like, as of right now, are you able to, do you have more of understanding of the proper swim technique or how to correct it as of right now? I really do. I mean, just, you know, you can watch videos and I did, you know, and you have plans that you can purchase or whatever, or, or apps, but you, I never really got a feel for how they were supposed to feel for me. Mm. Um, and it was never broken down like to the very basic things and then building upon that, like the training that you had in, in the swim boot camp, yeah. like from just standing still in the water and executing. I, know. I mean, how easy and like, how cool is that? But I never like thought of that. Um, and just building upon that and then really like getting a feel for what's correct and what's not, even if I don't get it perfect, I now understand, like I can feel like when my technique is off or feel when it's right. Like I know how that feels now. And that's, that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool because that is less than six weeks or 30 days, basically, because right here, uh, let me see. So her result actually is right here. Let me just make it bigger for our office. Like how she was when she started, I'm making it bigger right here. That was before. So uh, July 4th right here. So she watched that training on end of June. She got started right away. Like, I want something different right now. So she started July 4th, August 3rd. So July 4th, she did a test of CSS, 231 on 200 yards, 400 yards. It was 236 minutes per 100 yards. In August 3rd, that was just two days ago, she jumped. <laughs> 206 from 231. 212 from 236 so she's shaved basically about 24 25 seconds and i still remember end of june i asked her pam you've been on 230 240 minutes per 100 yards what would you feel if you just get that near to two minutes per 100 yards because how long have you been at 230 240 <laughs> yeah i mean years like since 2014 yeah yeah a long what? time yeah. <laughs> That's like, you know, I've done five years. And then I didn't do triathlons for a while and it didn't matter how long or how short a time okay. I've been swimming same yeah. all the time so I want to get back to uh, uh, office in our group so is there anyone here that you are uh, you can relate to this one we're in whether you're swimming or not swimming or swimming more you're up on it you have the plan you know and you're you, going to the pool every day. You're doing the laps. You're doing the, the technique. You're doing all of it. You're doing the toys, the different toys. And you still see the same, you know, kind of like not moving. Like what's happening? You scratch your head like, I just want to get faster. What is it that I need to do? Is that how you were back then, Pam? Yes. That, that, you said. Yeah. There's so many things to work on. It's like, it's so confusing, like what do I work on? How do I work on it? It's all like interconnected. Right. And then it's, it just gets kind of frustrating. It's like, well, I can't work on all of it. What, what do I need to work? What's, what, what's holding me back the most. And right. that was like always the biggest puzzle. Right. So when you were swimming back then, how were you swimming before you, uh, you met us? Like, were you just swimming laps? Or yeah. You just swimming laps. All right. Okay. See, I have a plan or something that was online and, and would try to do it. But then I was so slow. It would take so long. I wouldn't end up oh, doing okay. all the yardage, you know, because it's like I don't have <laughs> okay, gotcha. all day to be there. Plus, I'm not really sure that I'm doing this correctly anyway. Okay. You know, so then right. I just ended up swimming. I'll swim 100. Then I'll swim 100 maybe with some paddles. Maybe gotcha. swim 100 with a pool. But, you know, just like right. something to keep me not so bored. You know, basically. Not so bored. So you are you yeah. bored? Were you bored? Were uh, you I was I was kind of bored, yeah. Yeah. So were you also were you also just doing that just to for you to feel good that hey, at least I'm doing something rather yes, than exactly. oh, okay. I just go, yeah, because you're doing <laughs> something, right? It's good. I think that's common. Who else is bored when they're doing these things and like not getting any results from whatever you're doing, but at least you're being a little less bored Ooh. when you're using your toys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got toys, you got to use them. But then how do you know which toys to use? 
Amanda, we need to help you. Four. Whoa. Yeah. That's, Four minutes yeah. or 100 yards. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, Robert, I'm at three, 230. Yeah. Yeah. Can't break. So, Alisa, once you're at two minutes per 100 yards, you know, like a lot of those are, a lot of them will be a lot of pacing. So, we're going to tell you, like, what are the things that actually help Pam? Like, what are the areas? And this is what we talked about last time. What are the areas that Pam needed to do? Was it only technique? Pam, what did we do? Do you remember? Or you just magic? <laughs> <laughs> it was magic overnight. No, we really worked on, on technique. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the very beginning, the side kicking, you know, well, we started with the rotation. Sure. Yes. And then the side kicking, mm -hmm. um, which sucked for a while, but it really showed me, you know, I'm not balanced in the water. Um, okay. And we worked on that. Um, and then the, the catch and pull, like the, especially like the dog paddle drills mm. um, and the sculling drills, really like for the first time I could really feel, oh, water has substance. Oh, you can actually pull the water and it will like, you can actually like propel wow. yourself. I had never, I've heard that and, but um, intellectually speaking, but I'd never like actually felt Experience. that. Experience. Like that, what, what like does made it mean? a big difference. Yeah. What does it mean? Okay. Um, you said like last time you were watching some videos already in YouTube. So are these some of those that you've already watched? Some of this? Some of them were, yeah. Okay. But they weren't described to the detail. And it's like when when you did them, like, you know, when do you get to the point where you do sculling? Why? Right? In like, your workout, like strategically placed, you know, in my swim workout. Yeah. So it actually had an good effect and not just gotcha. like some randomly thrown in there and I don't even know why I'm doing it gotcha 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 is that the main difference of like because there's a video in YouTube already we did we do have some video as well but it was broken to really right that instructed like yeah. what's the, I, I wanted to understand like so at least our our athletes can understand also what is the difference that they could be missing if they're only watching the videos in YouTube right well, the YouTube videos, I mean, they do describe it to some detail, but with your videos, it really takes it step by step. I mean, step by step, why you're doing it, why this is important. And then, you know, and then when, when you start doing it, like at what point you start doing it. Um, but just having that connection and then seeing you demonstrate it, you know, really made a big difference. So understanding the why helped right. you out. Yeah. And then also I'm hearing that it's the simplicity of like, here's the step one, here's the step two, here's the step three, after, like in sequence. Right. right. That's, exactly. that, takes a, that takes some patience, but was worth it. Because uh, we have a lot of athletes, they just, hey, I just want to get faster. I just want to finish this laps. And, but with us, it's different. It's more about like, we want to make sure that you're it's not about finishing it to the other end. It's about doing it correctly. And you know what's happening in every movement. Right. And you get faster that way. I mean, it's, you, you get faster with the It's with weird. The it's the other way. At least way for me anyway, just getting the technique is like, that's a big missing piece. Mm. Um, I'm not perfect. I have a lot to work on, but I, I, I mean, it does like help so much like with your speed and enjoyment and just okay you know nice. giving you that base to build on gotcha yeah and then now you're able to actually even evaluate your whether you're doing it wrong or not yeah right okay which i had no clue before it's like i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> yeah yeah gotcha so uh i'm gonna touch base uh for that one kim i know you mentioned about endless pool and we also have athletes who are actually using tether you know, in their backyard pool. Uh, for that one, you can actually do your technique there. In fact, you can even put a mirror there if you'd like, I think, you know, you can be creative on that one. And also, it, I think it's also much easier, you know, you get the video, you want to be able to see and observe whether you're doing it correctly. However, I think the different thing on this one is that, uh, Pam, it's the feedback. How is the, the feedback? So you, you post feedback, because feedbacks are important. Do you agree in terms? Because you could be doing it, but then if you don't know if you're doing it correctly, how did that help you? Um, just when I gave you the feedback, and I will say 
it's very important to be as descriptive and communicative because then you could take what I'm saying. Hey, I'm swimming on this on my left side, and, and you know this is what's happening. You know, um, and then you can come back and adjust my drills to make sure I focus on that weakness. So by describing, um, mm-hmm. I show my you know what my weaknesses are, what my challenges are. And that allowed you to adjust my workout so I could focus on those things. Yep, yep. Mm. So it is necessary to have some feedback because you can't get feedback from YouTube videos. I mean, can you? Can you post no, there? No, no, <laughs> can you post there and have you somebody can't. answer? Hey, look at my video. <laughs> but, so, no. Um, so, actually, I'm going to show you like what kind of feedback she gives because uh, a lot of athletes, they're Uh, One of those things that uh, hold him back is that like, well, how can a coach who you don't see, you know, help you out? But, you know, I mean, several times we have so many athletes who are actually getting help and actually getting faster without seeing me in person. And we get it in 30 days. These are just three of them. We have Pam and we have several more that we can back up. uh, We we have a data to back that up. Um, but what I wanted to mention to you is that how they're giving feedback. And I hope, okay, so let me see. Yeah, so this one is actually a feedback. So what Pam has done is that, I'm going to be honest, is that Pam actually did her best to take a video. She took video and it was only on the first week. I think <laughs> she only posted two videos and that was it. But she was very good. And I want to point this one out because I think everyone, all the athletes would actually benefit from it. What she's very good of, and I give her credit, is because she's so aware of what, she really is present when she's working out. Like she, you know, uh, she's able to explain what her body parts are doing as she moves to the water because she couldn't take video. With that, I take her feedback and give her like, okay, I need you to tweak this one. Okay, so let me uh, just here. Let me see here. All right, this one is one of those uh, feedback. This is from. I'm gonna make it quick, but uh, so this is just one of the feedbacks that she has given. So she said, "I did all the warm up activities, but as most of it was drill, I did not record data. Some feedback on drills. I have a lot of work to do on side kicking. While on my left side, I keep I kept drifting over into the right lane rope. That's a feedback." I could not swim in a straight line. I also drank a lot of water on this side. So that's feedback. So all this one, I take them and I know what's happening because I've seen already a lot of athletes. So now this is the feedback that I gave her. This is the first time that was four weeks ago, as you can see, four weeks ago, I said, this is your data, 231, 236, critical swim speed, 240. So now, after that, the feedback from someone who's very experienced and know where you're coming from, here we go. On your next attempt, I gave her things to focus. What does that do? I said, on your next attempt, number one, number two, number three. When someone gives you three points to focus, guess what? You don't go all around. Oh, I need to do fix everything. I I told her, no. Focus is very important in swimming. If you, it's like, if you're swimming, just see, think about it. If you're working on technique and you're thinking about so many different things in one lap, you're going to go slow. And I know that and I've seen that. So for her, I said, I need you to focus on three things. That was the focus. Or sometimes she could be probably just only have 20 minutes. Not only Pam, this is what I've said to other athletes, like especially those busy athletes. So for busy athletes, okay. Coach, I cannot go to the pool because of this. Can you go to 20 minutes or 30 minutes? Just focus on that particular thing. Because I know, because basically in swimming, your body has to move in sync. If one thing, like let's just say your stroke at the front is not great, it's going to be domino effect. Your rotation is going to mess up. Your kicking is going to get messed up. So if we fix something, the main thing, the main biggest thing that's actually holding you back, if we just fix that one, we're going to get the result. And that's what we've done with Pam. So I know for her, when I realized, oh, you know, some of them, like 
you know, your, your side kicking on one side is great, but the other side is not. So let's focus on the other one that's not working. I hope that makes sense, everyone. You guys get a lot. I, I think that's a lot today. <laughs> let's go back to Pam. All right. So, so that's one of, and you know, like, that's what I'm saying. Uh, basically what I'm, what I'm saying here is that feedback, you being in tune to what your body's telling you, not just swimming, actually bike and run because your body tells you something before something bad or good happens. For example, cramping, bonking, your body tells you something. So yeah. And then the next thing is that feedback to someone, you know, who actually could really help you and who cares for you. All right. So other questions to see. Well, I'm wondering what made you even want to do this? So like what, what made you the boot camp? Yes, okay. uh, sign up for, for coaching. What made you even seek it out? What made you say yes? What was it? Um well the live well, the live training, but how did I get to the live training, right? Sure. So I just come off a um a multi-day bike ride and I really like I was in really good shape. I'm I'm trying to keep that, but it's like wow, I miss like this, this, the camaraderie and just like challenging yourself and everything. It's like, you know, I really want to get back to triathlon. You know, 2020 was what it was. So nothing was happening then. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I came off of that this year. And I'm like, you know, well, then I really want to up my swimming game because that's always been like, you know, the bane of my <laughs> triathlon existence. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, well, and I saw, I don't know even how I saw the Feisty Fox coaching, but I saw that there was a training yeah. and it had the three ladies. And I'm like, yeah, this sounds exactly like what I need to, gotcha. to check out. So I've got to check this out. Um, and they're, you know, they're busy people just like me. Mm -hmm. um, and just hearing their stories and how they improved, it's like, yeah, this is, this is exactly, you know, the training that I need that'll, that'll help move me forward. Gotcha. I mean, I felt pretty confident in that. So. So and then you talk to us and then what kind of resonated with you when when we were talking? Um, but you were really focused on on like just breaking it down to the smallest like piece, what whatever your weakness is, like communicating, working on that, um, and that you would work with me because I I am a busy individual. I don't just swim. I mean, I have other things that I like to do and other responsibility, you know, the adulting things. Um, so that didn't seem to phase you at all. It's like, no, no, we can do that. You know, and I even heard uh, the other ladies, it's like when they only had 20 minutes, it's like, okay, well, let's just focus on this. You know, it's like, okay, someone can work with you if you only have 20 minutes. And sometimes that happens, right? Yeah. Um, the most important thing. So, um, so less time, but more focused time. And that really like, that really resonated. You do. <laughs> so, well, I, I'm going to tell you also, you know, in the beginning, the first week I gave her like four swim workouts and she also get back to me. She said like, coach, can we really, you said it's going to work out with three workouts, right? I said, yes, we can make it because I won't really want to do this trail run. I still want to do the run. I still have to work. So, and we make it happen. And then for those who is just tuning in, we're talking about how do you shave off 24 seconds of your swim pace in just 30 days? And what she did, you know, she asked me, can we do it three times a week? So she, we did. So that's Tuesday, usually Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, endurance more or open water on the weekend. And then on each one of them, I have to verify actually how long she was swimming. She was swimming less than an hour. How cool is that? So I have to like look, get the numbers there. Um, so yeah, so now what did she do? on those workouts, on those three swim workouts there. So let me uh, show you the focus because uh, I know Pam really want to do her technique because guess what? It's going to go, uh, it's going to get the results for the other four things here that she's going after. So on, on that 30 days, yes, we do the technique, okay? And that does contribute to the speed. And it also helps the endurance, okay? Why? Because you're being efficient in the water. When you're being efficient in the water, you produce, you, you require less energy in the water. Then you can actually swim longer. And also, if you have things that start hurting after a while, if you're yes. doing it correctly, those things don't start to hurt. Yep, yep. 
And then also we did also open water skills in the pool. She did, I'm going to tell you more about her adventure, wherein <laughs> she also raced in open water swim within during the boot camp. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about that. But I want to touch base the speed here. All right. So with the technique part, we also break th this one down. Okay. We also break this one down into breathing balance and alignment, catch, pull, kicking, rotation, stroke rate, all those in 30 days. All right. So, so the next one here. All right. So the next one is speed. Okay. Let me explain you the speed here. So the speed here. All right. Is mainly focusing on how you pace. Okay. How you pace in the water. And uh, so Pam learned this toy here, another toy, but we teach her of like how to really use it. Okay. So this one is a fitness tempo trainer. Okay. And fitness tempo trainer, basically, you know, they have different modes. A lot of athletes just use mode three. We use all modes. Okay. Depending on the workout. And basically it helps you to pace yourself. So you do not, you know, like exert too much effort or like too fast at the beginning. I mean, we're triathletes, especially those who are actually aiming for, let's say, 1500 or even 1000. OK, it's similar to like, for example, when you're running. All right. So you're running a half marathon, you're not going to run your 5K pace all throughout. You want to pace yourself. Right. Same thing as with swimming. Because if you go too fast and you want to aim that 400 yards or that 200 yards and you're not pacing, then you would slow down at the end, okay? It's just, you know, like you can compare that also on the cycling. Would, you would get winded really fast yes. too. Yes, yes. So, uh, well, one of the things that Pam uh, had done is that uh, we, so every time, and I, like I said, you know, it's, it's very beneficial if another person is looking at your data. For her, she's very busy and also she she's not really knowing of like how to do this one just yet that back then. But because I was looking at her data, I was looking at her data on all, almost every workout. So I said it and she got faster and she got faster again. So I kind of like poke that pacing because I, I don't I don't want her to be just, you know, like not <laughs> not pushing a little bit harder every time she's actually getting it. So the technique is working because I can see that she's already getting faster. But besides the technique, we're working on the speed by using the tempo trainer. The tempo trainer is where in I'm telling her to swim at that pace. So for example, let's just say you're running at 10 minutes per mile on a running, right? And then we want you to like feel, you know, feel how it is to run faster, maybe put a little bit of challenger at eight minutes per mile, you know, a shorter interval. The same thing as with, uh, same thing as with Pam, you know? So we need to pace just right. And that's something that requires actually just really analyzing the data. How do you like this one, Pam? I love it. I mean, it was the greatest thing. It's like I'd never heard of before, you know, just to, to understand the pacing and really know when that beep went off, it's like, okay that's how going the speed feels mm. you know and like you said you bumped it up just a little bit not not crazy like then i just die but like push yeah. that push that envelope a little bit more and a little bit more yeah well it's not just uh you know like push it too much it's also i want to also watch for pam is that i don't want her to be discouraged i don't want her to be judging like oh I'm not doing great, especially she's working. I had to just put just the right amount. And also because I don't want her to overtrain. So those are all combined that I have to look at, like just the right amount, just a little poking there. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and I think uh, I heard you say that it kind of kept you focused. It was, was also very uh, engaging. It was kind of like a game. It kept you sort of entertained. Right, not right. Bored. Am I beating the beep? Oh, I'm a little bit behind the beep now. Uh, you know, I need to stay focused here, you know, on what I'm what I'm doing. So, yeah, it made it really fun, but also very beneficial. OK. All right. So now we did talk about the open water swim race. So one of the things also for everyone who's <clears throat> on the line. OK, I hope you guys are really getting a lot from this one. So what happened? So what happened? It was actually just last weekend. It was last weekend, right, Pam? Uh Mm -hmm. Yeah, last weekend on the on her fourth week, 
of the boot camp. So basically about 30 days. So I assigned her something a little longer, 750 meter on her workout. And she found out that there's an open water swim race in her community. Guess what? How how long have you been, have you not gone into open water, Pam, before last weekend? Four years, 2018. The last race triathlon I did and the last open water swim I've done um, is 2018. So 2018. Yes. Okay. 2018. And then um, is the, I'm assuming with wetsuit or without wetsuit last weekend? Without. It without was warm. Yeah, so I didn't I didn't have to yeah, figure that part out. <laughs> Luckily. All right. Is, that, is anyone here who is like, you know, like you're a triathlete and then, you know, now there's an open water swim race in your neighborhood, like would you go? Would you not? Would you be kind of anxious because you would haven't you be done it a bit like for so Especially many years? um she did so uh, let me repeat that. She did not she did not go to open water swim for four years, not until just last Saturday. And what did you feel? So actually, when did you sign up? You did not even tell me. You just signed up. It was uh, uh, the- well, I signed up and then I told you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, you got well, excited. <laughs> ask for forgiveness later. No. <laughs> um, so it was a, it was an open water swim on the schedule, which. Yes. I hadn't been able to make because the closest open water is goes through the worst part of Atlanta traffic and and yeah it's just so I hadn't been doing it. It's like okay, here's an event. It's a very supportive, laid laid back, you know, but it's like a really good swim, open water swim event. And my training plan says 750, yeah. but you know they had a 5k, a 3k, a 1k. And then something shorter. It's like, well, I'm not going to do shorter, but I'm not going to obviously swim a 5K. But a 1K, that's like longer than what we had planned. And it's open water. So let's see. <laughs> so you signed up the night before. That's the night. How did you feel when you signed up? Were you excited? I was excited. And then, you know, you had that moment of what? Did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> so you signed up. Then you yes. woke up next day. Yeah. So funny. So it stormed all night the okay. night before. It stormed all night. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't get to tell you that part. Um, so the phone went off all night, you know, flood war, you know, just all kinds of crazy stuff. So up, up, uh, off and on all night. So I wake up. Cause I want to wake up early to get there and everything. It's like, I was laying in bed and it's like, you know, I'm kind of tired and it's, it's dreary outside. It's like, do I really want to do this? <laughs> it's like, and I was talking to some friends later that I actually ran into there. It's like, don't make a decision. I know this is off the topic, but don't make a decision about how workout or race is going to go while you're in bed. Get okay. up. <laughs> All right. Good. Can Have you some repeat coffee. That again? Can you repeat that again? Cause that was sure. very good that you just said. Yeah, so don't don't make a decision on how your workout's going to go or how your race is going to go while you're still in bed. Why Just is get- that? What happens? <laughs> what happens when you do that? Is there any reason? Well, then you'll regret it later. Gotcha. You know, get up, see how you really feel. You know, it's like, all right, so it's not storming right now, and I've had my coffee, and I don't feel that bad. Let me look at the weather. <laughs> well, it was supposed to rain around the time that, you know, it's like, well, wow. it's Georgia. It could say 20% chance of rain and it'll rain and it'll say 80% and nothing happens. So I'm like, all right, you don't have, you know, you're going. <laughs> and I really wanted to, you know, your brain tries to find ways out of things. So, <laughs> so I went and I was glad I did because the weather was fine when I got there. Um, mm-hmm. So first hurdle. You know, get out of bed. You're you're going. You're doing it. Just have your mindset that you know you're going to go do this. So w- before the start, or did you get nervous before the start? Did you feel like those, you know, something, the nerves, excitement, cold water? How yeah. was that for you? Well, luckily the water was very warm. Okay. But um, and there was a little roped off area where you could warm up. Mm-hmm. And so the races were coming in. So they started the 5K earlier 
and then they'd start another race. So it wasn't like a big push all at once. So people were coming in. So it was kind of, I was laid back warming up and everything. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get around this like nervousness that I always get. Like the first time I get in the open water, like any season, it's like the first, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then while we were waiting for the start, you know, I started getting the butterflies and stuff and I'm like, okay, well, I might have those feelings. So what am I going to do if I have those feelings? I was like, well, what have I done before? I've always gotten through them. So if I have them, then I'll just have to work through it, you know? Okay. So you talked to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Positive self-talk. You've been here before. You've You've been here before. Yeah. And you've done the work. I mean, you've more training than you've ever been (laughs) for any slim. So you've got that going for you. So this is just going to be a mind, like a mental thing. You know, it won't be a physical thing. So if, if let's say that you didn't go through the boot camp and you saw this one, would you have felt the same thing or would you just go through the the race itself i probably wouldn't even go uh, if i hadn't been through the boot camp I, I probably wouldn't have felt like oh i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna do this you know okay uh is that something relating to like in terms of your confidence before yeah i wouldn't have had the confidence you know okay. so now it's like oh okay i'm gonna sign up tomorrow i did yeah, the work i'm gonna try <laughs> okay, i'm gonna try true. i thought- think it, I, I know I can do the distance now mentally. Can I Okay. get through the, you know, break through that initial anxiety? Of, All know, right. And it's not, like, it's not like it wasn't uneventful. You did get some feet in your face and you did. Get yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah. Like, you get some rain. feet, you get the splashing around you, right? It's like the, it's not the pool, clear pool water. It's true. You can't see, right? And then there's, you know, the buoy is way down. It looks so far in the open water, you, you know, and it's like, okay, I just got to calm down, you know, and get my breath and just keep moving forward. However that is, even if it's not freestyle just yet, let's, let's calm get down moving. and then, and, and get moving, you know. So Pam is very humble, <laughs> but she actually won her age group. <laughs> no, so how cool is that? Oh. <laughs> Second, oh sorry. See, so I'm telling you, she's very humble. So she won second age group, even qualified to the state games of America 2024. And this is this was her first open water swim since four years ago, 2018. She signed up the day before and felt very good. How do you nice. feel about it? Now that you're like after this boot camp and then you won the uh, second age group of that race and you got faster, how is it for you now? I mean, that was not a long time ago. It was like, like I said, less than five, um, four weeks, basically five, four or five weeks happened fast. How do you feel? Did you ever think that this is going to happen? <laughs> no, I think when we first saw this, like, you know, if I could just get down to 2.15, Mm-hmm. I don't know that I could do that, but that would be, that would be awesome. You know? Um, so it's like, well, yeah, I, I, I just have to work on, you know, the right things, the right things. And that's, and that's the difference, you right. know, and so, staying positive. Right. And then what did you do when, I mean, you did, you did get some, a little bit of a anxiety at one point. Right. And so what right. did you do, like physically, to and and then also mentally to kind of stay on track and be be where you want to be yeah so for the probably for the first couple of hundred yards it was like rest stroke and then it's like okay you've done this before so okay. let's just try five regular stro- let's just do freestyle for five strokes okay, okay. You, you did that all right let's get our breaths all right let's go for uh, seven yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're still moving forward. All right, let's go for 10. Uh, all right, maybe 10 is too much right now. Let's, let's back off a little bit. <laughs> and then finally, it's like when I got to 10 strokes, it's like, all right, brain, the body is on board. So how about you just shut off and let's like do what we know it, we can, can do. So then it was like, all right, let's, let's just do it, you know? And then it's like, oh, let's, let's focus on my stroke. Okay. Like, oh, this feels good. You know, let's, let's just focus on that. It's just, some, I'm just, you know, this is good practice, right? 
And then um, I get to the booth, it's like, oh, now I get to practice like turning around the buoy because I haven't done that in, you know, years. There were there too, I had to turn around. So let's right. just focus on that. So, you know, by the end, it's like, wow, mm-hmm. you know, if I could have started out that way, I don't know what my time would have been, but <laughs> I got to the hard part and that's the hardest part. So um, I was pretty happy. That's a lot of talking to yourself. <laughs> job. You guys got that? So who's going to practice that self-positive talk? Like, hey, is the body and the brain cooperating <laughs> in sync? Who, and, who else does that? You guys uh, you guys do that? Yeah. And, and uh, what that tells me is that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Yep. You don't have to be like all fearless coming in and like, you know, it's not, it's not, it's okay. It's okay. You, you can still adjust as you go through it, yep. which, which Pam oh, did. And yeah. It's amazing. Were you, I'm curious, were you checking in with your technique while you were doing open water swim as soon as like you got their rhythm already? Is that something that you thought of during the open water? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like, okay, let me, let me just focus on my technique. Okay. It's like, oh, I can actually feel the, you know, I can actually <laughs> grab the water. I like, I actually You're like right the water <laughs> to propel forward. Oh, how cool is that? You know? So I just focused on that. Um, and it was, you know, it was great practice. Like this is, you know, this is great. I mean, I could have said, oh, this sucks because, you know, why did I like freak yeah. out a little bit at first? But it's like, no, I got past that. I don't, I don't have to be perfect. I just have to do my best, you yeah. know? Yeah. How did it feel that uh, you were able to actually, you know, uh, apply the technique part in your open water swim race? Were you doing that before? Like before? No, I was just trying to survive. <laughs> trying to survive. It, it was just something I had to go through to get to the bike, you know, yeah, and the yeah. run. And then now that you know more about the technique, does that make a difference in the way you swim or the way that your experience in your swim in the open water? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I've signed up, there's another open water event later this month I've signed up for. It. It's like, I want to, you know, I want more practice. I want to, you know, I want to do this again and, um, and keep applying that. Yeah. All right. I love it. Uh, what I'm hearing is that have, not having to focus on, Hey, this is my fear. And, and sort of, uh, this is the anxiety. I'm kind of like, uh, uh, you, you instead focus on, here's my form. I'm going to just going to count myself and, and this is the strokes I'm going to do. This is the pull I'm going to do. Like having something else to focus on and being confident in that is really sort of giving you like a mental tool to go forward. I like that. Yeah. Are you guys you're, uh, getting a lot from this, everyone? You guys getting a lot from this? Hashtag value. Because we're, uh, we, I have another question for Pam. So Pam, um, aiming for top of age group. Okay. Aiming for a top age group. How do you do it? Where you did not really aim for a top age group anyways for that swim. It just happened. Now it's a bonus. But then there's this mindset, hey, let's aim for the top age group. And uh, does that not pressure you? Or like, how do you reframe your mindset so it doesn't put shoulder, you know, like heaviness on your shoulder or stress you out? But hey, you put it out there. And why do you do that? I'm curious because there's other athletes who are like, Oh, I don't really want to say it. I'm just going to keep it to myself, but I'm going to train hard for it. But, you know, like, so like, but how do you reframe that? So you don't, it it doesn't stress you out, like in terms or like pressure you in terms of like aiming for high goals or being top of the age group. What do you do? Well, I mean, you know, I want to do the best that I can do, right. I want to be the best person I can be, the best athlete. Um, And just knowing that you don't have to be perfect, Mm. you know, but it's okay to have goals and it's okay to have high goals and and it's perfectly fine to go to shoot for those goals and if you don't make the goal Mm. take a look at it in retrospective you know what could you what what could i have done better or what can i do better next time but take that as a positive you know because at the end of the day what's the worst that's going to happen exactly you don't make the goal but Uh you'll have another tool or whatever, and you'll learn something for, for next time. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at it that way, you, it's not really, it can't lose per se. Yeah. That's the worst thing that can happen. It's always going to be a win because you're going to learn something. Right. Why not? 
and let it be. All right. Good stuff. Nice. Well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Over the last 30 days, what would you think was the like the one thing if you had to put like the one thing that made like the biggest difference for you working together with Coach Angela and the rest of the team, what, what would you say it was? It's just that that like really the, the tailor made um, workouts like really like really like that understanding of what I really needed um, yeah. to improve the most. Just that understanding, you know, using not just using the data, but like understanding the person just from the communication. Yeah, of course. And and making that work um, for me. That I mean, you don't get that with a off the shelf or you know type you know that really care and understanding about where I'm at what I want to accomplish and what's the biggest thing that you see through the data and through my communication that will make that happen yeah. that really stands out what why is it important to you I'm just curious of course I know already <laughs> <laughs> why is that important uh, rather than just uh, you know like just some training plan because because I want to I want to know I want to know well, what is a training plan off, off the shelf training, training plan is not going to tell you exactly what, what you what you need to focus on the most mm -hmm. gotcha. you know if you can figure that out great I could never figure that out you know but having someone that actually can pinpoint the things that you need to focus on that to me is like makes all the difference and you don't have to do it five days a week <laughs> <laughs> well that's very good to know uh pam because i know you have more races to come up and i'll make sure that we continue giving that to you the feedback that taylor made workouts because pam this is only start now you see what's your capability in swimming and because she actually signed up for more triathlon race and actually she just said another open water swim so we're going to continue mm -hmm. to get faster and aiming for that top the best athlete that you can be. All right. All right. So, well, everyone, so this is what we do in Feisty Fox Coaching. We help athletes just like Pam was very busy, could be in plateau. All right. Just wanting to learn, like, how can you just train smart? Because I just want to get faster. <laughs> I don't want to work harder because that's me. Because <laughs> I'm too busy, but I want to do more things. I just want to have fun. But if I put so much time in one sport, and not even knowing whether I'm doing it correctly or not even getting result, that sucks because time is precious because that's the time away from your family, from work, from slipping in, right? Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, that's what we do in Feisty Fox Coaching. So if you're curious of like, how can we get you faster? We can tell you more about that. Put hashtag game plan, just like what we said or showed to Pam last time or other athletes in Ironman and beyond, actually. And they find out, you know, whether our coaching is right for you or if it's not, we want to help you still. OK, and there, this actually this call is all is free and put just put hashtag game plan is only 15 minutes. And if not, we also have other free training resource already available. Like, for example, the one that we talked about here, um, I kept showing it, but there's a lot more. So this one, correcting swim technique. There's also uh, building confidence in swimming. Okay, so we have that. Something for nutrition. Just put hashtag nutrition, hashtag cycling, hashtag running. And we have our team members to actually just give you access to that. Sounds good, everyone? So hashtag game plan. Anyway, so let's go back to Pam because I know it's getting dark there, but we want to make sure that we get some more tidbits from you, from golden nuggets. So Pam, um, what are maybe top two or three things that you can actually advise athletes just like you, you know, back then? What can you advise them so you, they can actually move forward to their training, whether that's swimming or triathlon? Any advice that you can actually uh, help them, you know, so that something that you've done. Um, yeah. So just the top two or three things. Yeah. Well, definitely find the right coach. <laughs> But once you get that, really the things is consistency, three days a week, whatever you can do, and just a positive mindset. All right, I'm going to take, if if the water aerobics team, or 
class shows up in the middle of your workout, okay, well, you got this much done. Just communicate that (laughs) and keep going. Whatever, whatever difficulties you come across, you know, just keep a positive mindset and stay consistent. Awesome. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for everything, for your time. Really, really happy to have you, for you sharing of how you did what you just did. It's mind blowing. Uh, yeah, I still can't believe it. <laughs> who does that? Like, who does that in 30 days? Got faster when you were in plateau for s- over five years or even almost eight years. That's long. Yeah. yeah, that's long. And actually, to do that in 30 days without even seeing me in person, and then more to come. And actually, one second age group. Man, all right, that's that's a lot. Well, it's again, it's only a start. Congratulations again, Pam, for starting this year well it's almost yeah second half starting the second half now going for triathlon everyone let's take pam and uh you know so if you guys have any other questions just post there and my team vineta and i will you know we'll check it out all right and then join us next week also for another yeah. new live so watch out for our announcements we do a, we give a lot of stuff free stuff here you know another live training next week um tell us what you got going on so we can help you because we won't know what to help if we don't know about you. (laughs) All right. So just, just raise hands. All right. Okay. Bye everyone. And have a great weekend. Bye Pam. Later. Thank you. Have a good one. (laughs)